Israel may strike Iran's nuclear facilities in response to the attack, the New York Times reported, citing American officials. According to the publication, during the previous shelling of Israeli territory by Iran, it was possible to avoid a powerful response from Tel Aviv and strikes on Iranian nuclear facilities. The Israeli side's reaction to the missile strikes was restrained. In April, they shelled an airbase in Isfahan, a city surrounded by several important Iranian nuclear facilities. Thus, the Israelis sent a message to Tehran that next time they could target facilities valuable for the nuclear program, the The New York Times believes. U.S. officials say Israel is considering response scenarios this time that include strikes on nuclear sites, specifically the enrichment facilities at Natanz, the heart of Iran's program. It is there, north of Isfahan, that Iran synthesized its near-bomb-grade uranium, which U.S. officials say can be converted to bomb-grade in days or weeks. Striking there would take much longer to produce a nuclear weapon. Possible targets known to Sima Shine, a former head of Mossad's research and evaluation division, include oil facilities, military infrastructure and nuclear sites. She also said it was possible that Israel could go after senior military officials, though she doubted that Iran's political echelon would be on the hit list. The question will be whether to go wider or no, Shine, who now serves as director of the Shiite Axis Research Program at Israel's Institute for National Security Studies, said. And from what I understand, there is an ongoing consultation of the cabinet, they, together with the Americans that are in a very delicate time now, a month before elections. Israeli officials have previously called for a joint strike with the United States against Iran, particularly targeting nuclear sites that Israel has long warned served as the basis of a burgeoning nuclear weapons program. Iranian officials have repeatedly denied seeking weapons of mass destruction, though officials and experts have suggested this could change if the Islamic Republic faced an existential threat. Trump held an event at a museum in Milwaukee, Wisconsin's largest city and home to the state's largest number of Democratic voters and second-largest number of Republicans. His appearance there was also meant to give him reach into the city's conservative suburbs, a part of Wisconsin where his support has softened but where he must do well to win. His event was not open to the public and his audience was to consist only of news media. Trump took questions for more than half an hour. He claimed the U.S. faced its most dangerous time since World War II, citing the escalating Middle East conflict as well as the Russia-Ukraine war, and again argued he would have prevented those conflicts had he won a second term four years ago. A reporter asked Trump another question about his recent decision not to participate in a 60 Minutes interview. Trump said CBS owed him an apology before he appeared on the show again. The former president alluded to a previous appearance with the show's correspondent, Leslie Stahl, in 2020. The interview between Trump and Stahl was contentious, and Trump cut the session off early. 60 Minutes said Trump's campaign had initially agreed to an interview before telling CBS that the former president would not appear. The network said its invitation to sit for an interview still stands, and correspondent Scott Pelley will explain Trump's absence to viewers. Before we begin, I want to send our love to the millions of people who are still suffering from the aftermath of Hurricane Helene. Yesterday, I was in Georgia to survey the terrible damage from the storm. It was terrible. And uh, Georgia was hit very, very hard. They're doing a great job. Governor's doing a great job. Everybody, they're all working together. And uh, we helped them uh, out a little bit. In North Carolina, the biggest problem uh, seems to be, like, zero communication. The poles are all down. The wires are all down. And they asked me whether or not I could help with Starlink. It's uh, another genius concept of Elon Musk. And I called Elon, and they were having a hard time getting it. It's a, it's a hot thing. And Elon immediately got involved. 
Brian, I think it's the most dangerous time we've had, certainly since the end of the Second World War. I think it could end up being a world war. You have two, two hot spots, and you'll probably have a third, maybe, with Taiwan. But you have uh, Ukraine and Russia, and that's going — that's out of control. I met with President Zelensky, and I got along very well with President Putin. I think I can get it solved, uh, but we should get on — and immediately have to — I think I would like to be able to solve it while President-elect. If I get elected, I'm going to work on that immediately. It's going to be my first two phone calls. You know, you have to give Israel a lot of credit for being able to protect itself. You look at these forces. They shot down almost 200 rockets today. But this is not the way uh, anybody should have to live. So we're going to uh, obviously be very involved in the Middle East. This would have never happened. We did the Abraham Accords. I think everybody, including Iran, would have been in the Abraham Accords. Had I taken over as president, uh, I believe — I think even Iran would have been in the Abraham Accords, ultimately. It would have been great for everybody, and you would have had peace in the Middle East. CBS is saying that you have uh, pulled out of a, a planned uh, interview on 60 Minutes. I'd just like to, you to address that report, and if you indeed are not doing the interview, uh, explain your reasoning why. Well, uh, right now, I went to — they came to me and would like me to do an interview. But first, I want to get an apology, because the last time I did an interview with them, if you remember, they challenged me on the computer. Uh, they said the laptop from hell was from Russia. And I said it wasn't from Russia. It was from Hunter. And I never got an apology, so I'm sort of waiting. I'd love to do 60 Minutes. I do everything. I mean, I do you right now, right? Um, and you're tougher than 60 Minutes, frankly. Uh, so I like to get an apology. So I've asked them for an apology. Let's see if they do it. I wouldn't mind doing uh, 60 — I've done 60 Minutes a lot. I did 60 Minutes twice with Mike Wallace, the great Mike Wallace. He was great. His son is from a different ballpark. His son doesn't have — I said, you want to be like your father? Just don't have the talent.